Hi, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Presentation Hell Podcast. We are podcasting here from Embark Studios in Tampa, Florida. Today, I have the pleasure of Erin Deal. She is the big deal coming on today, and she's going to tell us what she does, how she does it, and how improv can affect senior leadership in, in business, in your life, and everything that goes about. Good to have you here, Erin. I am stoked to be here, James. It's good. Oh, you were on my cool. show, so I feel like this is an old this is an old hat. We're we're putting it like back tennis. on. Serving it back and forth. So Aaron, take a minute and tell tell the audience who you are, what you do, and and why it's important to to them to to learn about what they're gonna learn. Yes. My name is Aaron. I'm a Taurus. I like long walks on the beach. No, I'm Aaron Dio. I am a professional development facilitator, keynote speaker, and founder of the professional development company, Improve It. We use improv comedy to help leaders and teams train themselves on power skills using the healing powers of improv comedy. So it has been a wild ride. I've been in business 10 years. Uh, you came on our show, the Improve It podcast. And I am now a new author. I am launching a book as the date yeah. of this recording in six days. So six days. It's crazy. So this, this is going to be on Amazon. Can you show me the book? I can show you the book. Yeah. I was fanning myself with it earlier, but this is it. I see you. I see you. Yes. It's, it's a, a nice cover. Guide. Nice and reflective. Thank you. Thank I can you. see Thank myself. You. Yes. In we it. wanted a little, a little, uh, little Are you em proud embellishment of your book? here. Book? my first book yes and i am proud of it it is a uh a labor of love for sure but it was something i really was guided to write and something mm -hmm. i know will serve a lot of people so what will people get out of the book what is the basic theme that after reading the book they will be bettered for yeah so it's broken into three parts and it's the entire core core message of the book Self-love plus selfless leadership equals a magnetic culture. So if you can give yourself all the love, if you can pour love into yourself, a lot of people forget to do that, especially post-pandemic. A lot of us are feeling that burnout. If you can do that, then you have way more to give to the people that you lead and a lot more empathy at that. So that's where the radical empathy comes in. And then once you're really leading from this selfless place, you're attracting and retaining top talent. You're not only attracting talent, but you're attracting organizations, community, people in your life that are aligned with your mission. So you become a visionary, you attract the missionaries that help you carry out that vision and are in line with your mission. And through that, you just make people feel seen, heard, and valued. Seen, heard, and valued. I think everyone wants to hear that and sadly that's what social media they think you're going to get you get seen you get heard and sometimes you're valueless <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah sometimes you feel unvalued yes that's when, right. you get one like you know but it is that's a whole different world i should write a book about that and i will it'll be called fail fluencer um <laughs> fail fluencer, yeah. that's, that's good <laughs> you've already down the road so let me just break some of those things down right here it you you say there's three components self-love self-empathy and that results in what selfless leadership selfless leadership i'm sorry self-love selfless leadership and it leads to what result a, a magnetic culture so magnetic it doesn't have to be culture. magnetic culture so people are attracted to people who care about their people People, I, for example, I have a, a beautiful case study in the book of my own, my former boss, who is actually a chapter in the entire book. I say, I tell her, you're a chapter in my book, literally and figuratively. Uh, mm -hmm. I was in a job that was sucking my soul. She pulled me out of that job after two phone interviews, never met in person. I was doing business development at a recruiting firm, never thought I would do that job. When I tell you doors were slammed in my face, doors were literally slammed in my face. And I stayed in that job for five years because of her leadership. And the reason I left is because I got the idea to start this company and prove it. And guess who was my biggest cheerleader and advocate and you told are. me to go for it with everything. Exactly. 
So uh, she, her name is Jennifer D'Angelo. She goes by Jen. And I hope she becomes, yeah, hope she becomes a case study for everybody because she really, and it wasn't just for me. She was, she was a leader like this for everyone. She led, she served, she showed me how to lead my own team. I'm so grateful for her to this day. I just talked to her yesterday and I've been doing my own business for 10 years. So she's a light in my life. And and she really is the part of the reason that I lead in this way and that this whole book flowed so nicely together. Let's, uh, what are, let's look at each one of them. Self-love. What are some yeah. three or four bullet points that represent good self-love that other people oh. see that, that, that radiate, you know, it gets to the magnetic thing, but it starts with that. If you don't, obviously, if you don't care about yourself, no one else will care about you, but Please tell, tell, let, tell everyone yeah. what are some of those components. So I also tell two stories in the book about two characters, upset you and an upward you. And upset you is somebody who wakes up, their day is chaotic. Similarly, how I came in here, James, real hot, real <laughs> flustered. Everything is stressful and there's no rhythm or flow to their day. Upward you is a person who can flow through their day with ease, who's given to themselves first so they can then give to others. So three things, and these are actually three activities pulled from part one of the book. Yes, and your AMs. So I'm an improviser. So yes, and is a huge component of what we do. And that means take something and add to it. So give yourself time in the morning for you first. And I give tangible okay. tips and tricks on how to do that. But essentially a morning routine, people love to talk about that. I could, I love talking about a morning routine, but it has changed my life and the way that I show up for my team. So that's one. Mm -hmm. Two is know what you want out of your ideal day. And it just so happens I have a pretty punny last name. So I spell ideal, I-D-I-E-H-L, ideal day. And so it's know what your I am statement is, design your morning. It is, um, so I, D, I, it is in, influence yourself. So make sure that the things mm -hmm. that you're putting into your mind. Kind of your, are your, your inner dialogue. Your inner influence dialogue. So, yeah. yes. And then environment, know what you want, where you want to be working how the H is how you want to feel. And then the L is the last thing you do before your head hits the pillow at night. So knowing a flow for how your ideal day could look is self-love. And then the third thing is an activity that I really love called new choice. And it's anytime our mind starts to go to that negative place, we start to have limiting beliefs. It's a really quick tip and trick and i can do it here with you james if you're open to it because yeah go it ahead works lay it on me. i'll play the game i'm good okay. with it okay all right so okay what's a um what's a limiting belief that comes up in your mind what's something that you start thinking about and you start going down this negative rabbit hole what would that be nobody loves me oh and it's valentine's day where we're recording this okay <laughs> nobody loves me and thank you for being well, I, I get up in the morning and I'm wondering if what I'm doing is is really appreciated by those who benefit from it. And I start wondering if they really, truly appreciate my efforts in my day. And then I start going into the if I come to that, they don't for whatever reason, right or wrong. I start I start going into nobody loves me and then no one does it matter. Where's my piss and vinegar? What? And I start going into the. I, I call it the the negative vortex versus a positive I vortex. And yes. either you're going down or you're going up. And okay. How's that? Is that that's that is perfect. And I love that you call it negative vortex. I call it a scarcity statement versus an abundance statement. So here's how we can change that game. Nobody loves me. Okay. Here's what's going to happen. The next time you start saying that, which first of all, thank you for being so real and vulnerable. You're going to stop yourself wherever you are. If you're in a group of people, you can do this like just by clasping your hands together. You're going to clap and tell yourself new choice. So say new choice. New choice. You are then. I love step by those two. who care about me. <laughs> yeah. Well, first, I love that you changed it. But the second step 
is that you are going to forgive yourself for that negative thought. And this is the most important part because we are human beings. We all do this. So second mm -hmm. step is forgive yourself. And then you got to the third, you're going to reframe. And what was your reframe? Uh, the, the people I care about do love me. And there's a hundred reasons why, and I can lay them out right in front of me. But for some reason, yes. when the bad thoughts start, all of those go into the dark and I can't see them, find them or get into it. And if I shift it that way, suddenly 30 or 40 things will appear that are as, as simple as helping your child give a Valentine for their, their kindergarten class. That's it. Oh, okay. So first of all, I want you to know that the things that we say to ourselves are always skewed towards the negative. There is this amazing study that I absolutely love, okay? And it says that 50,000 to 80,000 thoughts are the average amount of thoughts a, a human thinks a day. Do, have yeah, I talked to you about right. this before? We, no, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm just aware so, of, of, of my own brain and I did the math when you were sitting there. I was like, that's probably right. I'm probably about 2,000 an hour and I started going through it. Yeah. Just when, I, just is, when you said is, that. Well, okay. And so there's, this was a study from the National Science Foundation. It was in 2005. So things might have shifted, but this is from a study in 2005. Of those 50,000 to 80,000 thoughts, we think 12,000, what's called thought worms. So essentially sentences, words strung mm -hmm. together, right? Okay. Of those 12,000 thought worms, how many of them do you think are negative? Probably the majority, 80% of them at this point. You nailed it. Yes, it's 80%. And then oh, okay. here's the freaking kicker. It really is 80%. Okay, here's the kicker. You're only the second person I've ever talked to who knew that. The other guy has a podcast called Good Mood Podcast. So he was like, of course, I need to know this study. Uh, and then of that 80% of negative thoughts, we are actually repeating those negative thoughts. Yeah, over and over again. 95% over over of the time. Yeah. So that new choice is an easy way to give yourself more self-love. So first one is yes and your AMs. Get a solid routine together to give to yourself first. Two is go through the ideal day. Envision what you your flow and day would look like. And then third is anytime you start to have those limiting beliefs, clap, snap yourself out of it with new choice, forgive yourself, and then reframe. And that new mindset is the new mantra that you're going to yeah. repeat 95% of the time. Over. One yes. of the things I want to take to that is your, the, 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 the re, redoing your habits and stuff of a daily process, what you do to get going. Um, a lot of times those, those uh, things you do become habits that are either positive or negative in the long run. Like, getting up and making your bed right off the bat is a better habit yes. than not. Sometimes when you have a, well, back in the day, when you have a cup of coffee, the habit was to have a cigarette with it. That's obviously a bad habit. Um, getting some positive, I had a bad habit before in my life. I used to w wake up and read the newspaper and I would walk yes. away thinking the world was horrible and every single yes. thing against me and everything's going yes. on. And, and I've, I, I consciously had to fight myself not to get up and go get that newspaper to see that bombs are going off here and this one's being treated wrong and this happened over there and a tornado's over there and, you know, people are robbing stuff here and that's in my neighborhood. That drove me batshit crazy. Yes. Yes. And so I have those to tell you, I was a community. Morning, yeah, go ahead. No, sir. Well, just on that note, I was a communications major in college. Okay, this is a long time ago. And there was one theory in particular. Communications was all about learning all these different communicational theories. I can't think of the name of the theory, but I know who wrote it. It's a man named George Gerbner. Essentially, cultivation theory, that's it. What mm -hmm. we put in our minds obviously influences okay. us, yeah. the way we see the world. I... Skim. I have a, a newsletter called The Skim that I get that skims the news. It's for millennial women. Okay. That's me. Millennial women. Here I don't read it. Yeah. I don't read it though. Let me tell you that. I really don't read it. I get it. And if I need to know what's going on, I'll skim it. I do not look at anything on my phone until after I have gotten up, meditated, I have worked out, and then I've taken my son to school. 
I don't respond to a text. I don't look at my social media. I don't open email until all of that is done. That takes discipline and years of discipline. I did not do that every day of my life. That's not easy. It's not easy, but truly, and, and I didn't even check my email because it's we're recording this at 9 a.m. I had zero time to look at my phone. I just checked it to make sure if, in case you emailed me, anything happened or making sure, you know, just making sure I was ready to you're go. On point. You, you were here on yeah. time, sliding here? into home base, sweating it out, trying to, you're ready to go. <laughs> yes. But so, you know, and not every morning is going to look like it's in a complete flow. Cause when I came here this morning, mm -hmm. I was, you know, running in here after dropping my son and trying to do all the things for Valentine's day. And so I was flustered. It's never going to be perfect. However, you can set up systems and habits and processes in your life that allow you to give to yourself before you go do your email, which is all requests from other people, or before you check social media, which is other people's thoughts affecting your own. Mm -hmm. It's it's just a, a way of discipline, but that is self-love. That is giving to yourself. Well, you're protecting that what is. you're seeding. You're, you have a brain. You yes. seed your brain with thoughts. If your thoughts are seeded with the news in the morning, fear will motivate what you're doing and you'll be reactive as opposed to active. You're, you will be emotion instead of motion. You won't be going yes. in the right direction. You'll be responding to it. And therefore, you're not in control of what you're going on. So by relieving yourself of some of these you're not planting the seeds of fear doubt chaos anger murder war everything that you get put on by the news and it allows you to have more fruitful growth in your brain and therefore in your body and therefore in the people you deal with and hence self-love and that's the first step I love right it. that's it that's it you're yeah, learning a lot that's why i'm here on this <laughs> podcast to learn more i need, I need the big deal you need the big deal. You need the big deal. And that is actually my dog's name. He and his and middle's then, initials are FN. Mm -hmm. Big FN deal. And that's yeah, not and the radio didn't station. Count. Sorry. <laughs> it's it's not FM, like the radio station FM. It's, it's the FN, like Nancy. Yeah. yeah but and right. he is an eight pound toy poodle, you know? So he's, he's rocking he's rocking his deal. name. Yes. Big F and deal. All right. So the, let's go to the second stage here. We're talking about selfless leadership. Now that I've learned to love myself, I've learned to plant the seeds of, uh, or should I say, I've learned to avoid the seeds of negativity that permeate my brain and my internal, uh, you know, uh, thoughts going on. How does that translate to the second stage of selfless leadership? Totally. Okay. I'm going to give you some cliches and then I'm going to tell you the real deal. Okay. Keeping it real with Aaron Deal. Cliches. Put on your own oxygen mask first. Fill your tea kettle so you can fill other people's cups. All those things, all those metaphors lead us to what selfless leadership is. You cannot have a one-on-one -on -one conversation in a state of chaos that is productive. Mm -hmm. You cannot effectively guide your team to a, or yes and with your team in a brainstorm if you're not in a place of calm and peace. So ultimately what the first step does is it allows you to get yourself in a peaceful, a peaceful place, a peaceful mindset, so that when it's time for you to now open that email in the morning, when it's time for you to start giving, you are giving with a full tank. You have things to give and you're giving in a way that's not depleting you. It's actually restoring you. So, you're not giving negativity. You're you're supporting those around you through the the self love you've achieved earlier. That's it. And I mean, I have led in both scenarios. I have led from upward you, which is I would say how I've been leading the past two or three years. Mm -hmm. Before I found a really grounding mindfulness practice and way to start my day, I was mm -hmm. leading like the Tasmanian devil upset you. I would come in hot and heavy in the morning. I literally lived in Chicago. I had to stand on a bus in somebody else's armpit for 20 minutes to get to work. And then it was freezing. So I was wearing a down comforter with a zipper. I'd get to my office. I'd be sweating. I'd be late because I'd stop and get a cup of coffee at Starbucks. And I'd throw all my things down and I'd be like, hi. 
And that's how I started my day. And then it was just racing from meeting to meeting, no flow, no intentional thought about how the day would look. And so as I was intention unintentionally going about the day, I was unintentionally not listening to my team. I was unintentionally not being, being fully present. I was thinking about other things as they were talking to me. I was well, unintentionally. As a leader, you have to give. You have to give continually. If you're not yes. giving, then you, everything's going to fall apart. And I had a wonderful man on my own show named Simon Ong, and he wrote a book called Energy. I'm going to give him complete credit for this. He said, people don't lead people. They are leading energy. And I okay. truly believe that because if my energy is in a place of negativity or if it's not in the right mindset in order to give to others, I'm not mm -hmm. only doing a disservice to my team, I'm doing a disservice to myself because why am I leading a team in the first place where I have nothing to give? That's that's also relevant, not only for business, but for love. Yes. Human connections. If you want to yes. make connections and you're not giving the, you're not identifying the right energy to go with you and what's going on, you're not going out there. People have always said on a simple level, don't sit those two together. They're going to get in trouble. That's because yeah. they've got similar energy. I know. Usually there's a little bit of a, you know, a, a deviousness yes. to it when you hear that type yes. of thing. But I was, I've been um, looking for, I have, I have a, I have a business coming up right now that's going through and I'm, and it's a, it's it's at the formation stage and I'm forever looking for someone to 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 identify and be that first hire for it mm. and I was going through meetings and such and part of that hire is you can't in that position you can't say I need an accountant I need a a, a salesperson yeah. I need this you need someone who understands what you're doing in your energy and will carry the ball for you because they have the energy to do it. And it's a different type of interview that goes that way. I, I get it. I hear what you're yes. saying. And I can see and how I energy. Yeah. Go ahead. No, you go. You go. Go ahead. I was going to say, I can see how the energy leads to the next stage, which is a magnetic culture because magnets are energy and there's positive and negatives that attract and there's differences there. And when you're building something, you need differences to make it because I don't take my accountant away 50% from their job to go code yeah. and take my coder away to do 50% of marketing and the marketing person to do 50% of customer service. We have a division of labor and the different energies coming together go all and they all pull from the top leader and every one of them feeds into it. And if you have the wrong polar energy in there, it'll short circuit the whole operation. I love it. And there, I actually, exactly what you just mentioned, I use a metaphor about magnetiles. Do you know what magnetiles are? I have an They're, idea. Are they okay. on the uh, kitchen door? Kitchen on the can, refrigerator can, door? And this is because I have a toddler. Okay. I have almost five-year-old. It's these little uh, plastic blocks all different mm -hmm. shapes, all different colors that have magnets that stick together and you can build all, all different types of creations. And right. if you think about magnetiles, literally all shapes, all colors, you can form this magnet, like this beautiful magnetic creation that can go as high as you want it to go, depending on how many you have. What is wonderful. And what about you just, what about, I love about this that you just said is that they are different sizes, mm -hmm. shapes, yeah. colors. All yes. of those things have to work in order to build the organization, the community. You that don't want correct. four circles, four red you... circles to build the tower. You need all different shapes and sizes and mindsets. And so right. what is polarized, what is pulling them together is this attraction and what I equate the attraction to is core values. And that's what mm -hmm. the whole third part of the book is about is identifying your core values collectively as an organization or a team, wherever you're at now. And then having those core values be what attracts the other magnetiles to you. It's an alignment with values and mission. And you can 
sometimes I, I and, and it depends on the role. Like if I'm hiring a Java, you know, a, a, a web designer and they need to know Java, I'm not going to be able to train them in that. However, mm -hmm. if I'm hiring somebody as a business development associate, they've never done sales before, but I know that their values are so in line with our mission mm -hmm. and who we are, I know I can train them. If I have the skill set to train them, but they have the core values and the mindset, I'm willing to do that because the other is much harder to train. Oh, I totally get that if you're on that. So what I'm hearing here, your book, your career, your improve it, the, the improv type setup is about learning three basic things that help any organization, any family, any community, any country. It doesn't matter what they are. And those seem yeah. to be self-love, getting yourself in a positive trajectory, the positive vortex versus the other one, your inner dialogue, not being negative, but positive and not and being careful what you feed that because yes. that then leads into the selfless leadership where if you're positive and you're doing it, your energy is gonna be positive and you're gonna seek, seek out similar energy, not the exact energy because you don't need the exact, you need um, like, like magnets, north and south, they come together. You know what I mean? Opposites attract. You don't want, I don't, I don't need another guy who does exactly the same shit I do. That would just start right. a fight. I need right. complimentary. I need to be supported in areas and there's areas I can support them. And by bringing that in there and actually doing it, you achieve something called a magnetic culture. And that magnetic culture comes from that selfless leadership. It's where everyone starts coming together, even though they're different, to make a complete entity. The whole business works better because all of the pieces are linked together properly. They create structure. They create strength. They're based on core values of the company and the mission where they're going. On the flip side of this, did I, did I calculate? Did I kind you of sum it up? You nailed properly? it. You nailed it. And the, the things, yes, the things you want to worry about are someone getting on your ship who doesn't represent those values and the energy is wrong because the wrong energy can mess up the entire chain. You're only as strong as your weakest link. And if you have the wrong energy in there, it's going to break and it will cascade into those other people. They will see it. And you as the leader, if you don't expunge that quickly, you will lose respect of the other people as well. James, preach. And let me tell Hallelujah. You, Let's roll the business, yes. make it right. I totally get it. Let's, yes. And then here's, I, on that note, I, I've had improve it for 10 years, okay? There has been energy that did not align. And, you know, I handled one pretty quickly. The other did not happen overnight. And let me tell you, the, the tower was fallen and it was, yeah. and, and, and it is as, as a leader, it is your job to manage that energy and to allow every person in that company to trust you to do mm -hmm. what is right for the greater good. That's right. That's and right. And I have learned that many times. And, but I will also say that we have had and improve it. I have 22 facilitators. I have an internal team of six and uh, of the 22 facilitators, all but like three have been with us since 2016. And then we hired the others in 2018 on my internal team. I've got one person that's been with me all 10 years, one that's been with me seven years, one that's been with me another seven. I mean, we have the tenure because we care and we do what is right and we believe we are all mission critical. So this, this brings individual. a good, good, good context into into what you do and offering it up. So we we got through the principles of what it takes to build a, a things, certain core values, how to deal with yourself, how to deal with the people around you, and how to bring it to the whole organization and and get it out there. Your company improve it uses improv to help pull out these characteristics, and and your facilitators obviously do that type of thing. So one, I'd like you to, A, tell us a little bit how improv pulls out these characteristics and how it makes a an organization, a team, whatever, better. And then B, after that, tell the audience how they can reach you so that they, if they see this type of something they want to do, 
How do they reach out to you and say, hey, I want to buy your services? Oh, I love that. Thank you very much. So I will say this, the characteristics of a great improviser make up the characteristics of a great human. As an improviser, you have to listen effectively. You have to do what I mentioned earlier. Yes, and you have to think quickly on your feet. You have to give empathy to your scene partner on stage in order to make it work and not negate what they're saying. You have to not only respond in a meaningful way, but you have to add value to that. And so mm -hmm. we took the principles of improv comedy and we broke them down into 10 different offerings that help with power skills. So mm -hmm. team building, effective communication, leadership, presentation skills, networking, thinking quickly on your feet, leadership, sales, early career, so career 101. Um, we also have a vision setting workshop. And then how we teach is through play. It's through experiential learning. So mm -hmm. it is, it's very hard to show how it feels over video because people are so present with each other. They are laughing. They have what I call the aha, ha ha moments. So it's mm -hmm. where the light bulb goes off, but they're just laughing at the same time and having fun. It's almost like we trick them into learning. And we've worked with everyone from Fortune 100, 500 to mom and pop shops. And it's not industry Wait. specific, it's objective specific. So you use improv to hit 10 basic characteristics that and each one of them are highlighted in improv. And by doing that, it, it creates a playful environment, which lets down the barriers, which allows people to be yes. human. And, and it allows connections and understandings to be made that weren't there beforehand. Exactly. And you believe exactly. that through the, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. No, it's. You believe the, that the, these 10 components when highlighted in a corporate environment at a team environment or whatever it might be, will help everyone mesh better. And it might even find out who's that person that doesn't, shouldn't be there. <laughs> might yeah. actually like guys, you know, do that. And through this process and taking them through this workshop, if you will, um, this is what makes a better company, a better team. And this is what you sell. How can exactly. they reach you? How can the audience yeah. wow. say, wow. Aaron, I, I need to do this. Deal. Yeah, you need to come do this for me all the time. That was really, that was right, to, that was it. I send a go pie in the sky. That was narrowed down. That was boiled down. I love it. But you can find well, all I'm of this. I'm thinking about the audience, not the not the guest. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Th your audience thanks you when I thank you. But mm -hmm. I I would say the easiest way is just go to my website. It's AaronDeal.com. It'll take you through all of our offerings. It'll it kind of goes back and forth between our improve it page, but that's where you can buy all okay, the. Okay, that's Aaron Deal. E R I N D I E H L. Yes, and it's not exactly Aaron the way Deal. it sounds. Aaron Deal, yes. E E I it's, like I H L. Yes, that's it. It's AaronDeal.com, and it will take you to all the right places. Um, but thank you. It's it has been a wonderful journey to watch teams transform, and that is one of my the the most amazing things of my career is hearing how this work has really trained people to think in a different way. It has allowed people, like you said, to, to let go of those barriers and just connect in a way that is more meaningful than they've ever experienced before. Well, that's, that's excellent. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for coming on the show here today. I, I, from what you said, the listeners are going to get real concrete things they can step away from and say, God, I was telling myself that my boss hated me and they gave me a cupcake this morning. Maybe she doesn't hate me. That's right. <laughs> I'm just saying these little things in life, you can look for the positive and find them as opposed to the negative going through your brain. And these are just little steps that can help do it. Um, absent that, we can get your book. We can see you at Aaron Deal. And uh, you provided a lot today. Thank you for coming on to the Presentation Thank Health you. Podcast. Thank you, James. This was so fun and so good. And thanks for coming on my show. You were on my show too. So we've had, you'll yeah. check James out on the Improve It podcast. Yeah, the Improve It podcast. That was a lot more fun than this one. I wasn't the host of that one. I was a guest <laughs> I got to play as opposed to direct. <laughs> <laughs> you were great. Both times you yeah. nailed it. All right. Thank you. Thank you everyone for listening. I hope you got a lot. And here we are at Presentation Hell from Embark Studios in Tampa, Florida. Thank you for listening. Did you know this episode was brought to us by Presentation Hell, the book? This is how you take 
basically painful presentations and make them better stories. Don't you want to tell a story that other people tell? That's what virility is all about. That's what everyone dreams of being viral. Presentation Hell, the book will teach you how to tell better stories. Thank you guys for listening.